We're going to do a non-functional harmony piece and show how to do a little bit of analysis with it as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Finale and I'm going to create a new document with Setup Wizard. And we're going to choose a few instruments. Um, again, I'll just do engraved style. And now I'm going to add, let's add a woodwind. I'm going to add an oboe. And I'm going to add a clarinet. Let's add a viola. And I'm also going to add a harp. That sounds like a good group. Uh, notice we now have oboe, clarinet, harp, and viola. Uh, in addition to this, I'm going to add uh, some blank staff, or at least one blank staff at the bottom, uh, so that we could do some work there. Why don't we choose F major? Although, of course, WC uses key signatures, we will often be uh, moving chromatically away from that home key signature. We're going to specify initial tempo marking. I'm going to say moderato. And we're going to keep the tempo on the slower side. What about something like 52? And we'll say 10 measures just to start with. And so now it's loaded up the sounds, and we have our score. I'm going to zoom in. And notice that the clarinet is uh, ready to be in the transposition mode. However, for these documents, I'd like everyone to just use the concert pitch. The way to do that is you go up to Document, and you say Display in Concert Pitch. And that way, the clarinet, even though we know it's in B-flat, will be uh, written here just as a C score. We can get rid of using the text tool any of these other names here. Now the reason why I added a blank staff down here was maybe that we can put in some original harmonies. Now notice that Debussy's style and the style of non-functional tonality, for the most part, the harmonies move in a slower rate of speed. So I'm going to start with a complex harmony, and again that's one of the issues with uh, non-functional tonality. Normally you don't have very simple triadic harmony, but something that's a little bit more uh, complex I'm going to start with an F major 7th chord. Uh, just as an idea, these are just notes that I'm going to pull from when I'm going to do the rest of the piece. And this is why I put a blank staff down here, is to kind of get some musical ideas out. For our next harmony, we think about how Debussy's approach was to create uh, two harmonies in a row that have some interesting qualities. One of the things that he used was to share one or more notes with one harmony to the next to create sort of a segue. So that's what I'm going to do here. And I'm not going to be worried about keeping things in F major, of course. I can use whatever notes I want to. But tell you what, I'm going to keep the A, the C, and I am going to make this into an E flat. A little chromatic note there. Now I have an A half diminished seventh chord. And perhaps, again, like WC would often do, he might go back to the original harmony again. So maybe these are the first three chords that we have in the piece. Let's play it and see what it sounds like. So far, so good. I might want to put in a cautionary accidental, which we use with the asterisk key to show that the E flat from the previous bar has been neutralized. What if we create a texture pulling from these notes into the harp? Maybe something like this. So I've created a little line here in the harp. It outlines the chord that I'm using here, and that might be a way to start just to build up a texture. I'm going to now mute our little staff here, so I can just go View, Studio View, and then under that empty staff, the one that we're using, I'm going to just press the letter M, and that will mute it. So now when we play, we get this little harp line. I think that's kind of nice. We could always double up some notes. What if we do that a little bit? 
Here I've given some more pitches to the harp part, not a hard part. Let's hear it. Now one of the things I might consider doing at this point, as you know, Debussy's style is to move rather slowly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this tool over here on the main tool palette. It's called the Selection Tool. And I'm just going to highlight, grab all of it, and I'm going to move it to this bar, and I'm going to move it to this bar. Now all I can do is maybe make some modifications based upon what the harmonies are. And now I can, under a utility, transpose it. Let's transpose it up a third. And now we'll change some of the pitches to match the harmony. So here what I'll do is I'll easily use the speedy entry tool. I could just highlight a bar and using the minus and plus signs I can just change some of these notes because now all the E's have to be E flats. And then maybe in the next bar, maybe it goes up another octave. So I'm going to again highlight this whole bar with the selection tool, go under utilities, transpose the whole thing, but now instead of up a third, I'm going to change it to an octave. Let's see what this sounds like. And I'm happy with that. But again, this doesn't look exactly correct. So there's a few ways that we can change this to make it look correct. The first thing is we can add a change of clef. What I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight the clef tool here in the main tool palette. And now I'm just going to highlight the section that I want to have in treble clef. Double click it, and this change it to treble clef. Some of you will have automatic spacing turned on in Finale. I like to do it a little bit later, but just to show you how it works, I'm going to use the Selection tool. I'm going to highlight all of my material, and then under Utilities, Music Spacing, Apply Note Spacing. And that will make sure that none of the accidentals hit one another and so forth. When using the note mover in this situation, make sure that it is clicked on cross staff. And you'll notice you can highlight some notes and bring them to the other staff. In this case, I would additionally hit the asterisk mark on that E so that it becomes E flat on both staves. And if you want your score to look extra elegant, you could use a special tool that looks like this. That'll create some boxes here. If I click this one, you notice this looks a little bit weird. And then I can use the beam mover and make it look really nice, like a cross staff. One thing I would definitely do, though, in this third bar, is make sure that the E natural is shown to be E natural, since in the previous bar it was E flat. That's not really a cautionary accidental. In this case, it's a necessary one, especially for the harpist. Now we have to come up with some melodic material. Now, I don't know if this is the beginning of the piece or somewhere in the middle, but one thing, again, I can do is draw from the ideas from the harmonies themselves. In this case, perhaps the oboe. The oboe will play a high note, maybe moving down melodically through the G, and then a passing tone, F, to another dotted half note, E. Notice in this case, just like any other tonal music, you can use passing tones and other types of non-harmonic tones that don't exist in the overall harmony. Let's take a listen to this piece now. So we have a little bit of a texture, we have a melody, and if you really want to spice things up, you could also show some slurs, making sure that any tempo markings aren't bumping into it. Maybe we can also add some dynamics, perhaps using the expression tool under dynamics. Maybe this oboe line starts mezzo piano. And then using the shapes, we can crescendo into the next bar. And then subsequently, perhaps a diminuendo 
as well. Let's support this with the harp at mezzo piano. We could put that right in the middle. Now for the clarinet, maybe the clarinet has some kind of other line going on. Maybe it doesn't start here in the beginning, but maybe only in the last bar. I'm going to show you how to do triplets, and we'll make a little triplet motive in the clarinet. I'm going to start with just an eighth rest, and then maybe a little bit of, and then maybe a couple of notes from the harmony. But if I want to make this look like triplets, I go back to the main tool palette, hit this tuplet tool, hit the first note that I want to be under it. And notice here it'll say 3 eighth notes equals 2 eighth notes. And that's what I'm looking for in this case. And I can do it again. And if I want to, I could modify where the tuplet sign is. Again, we'll put a phrase marking. Let's see what this sounds like now. I decided I'm going to use the viola rather than to create a texture to sustain some of the notes that fly by quickly in the harp. For example, maybe the F here in the beginning, and then maybe the E flat, and then maybe the C. It might also act as a sort of a sub melody to the oboe. I'm also going to mark it mezzo piano, and I probably should do that also for the clarinet. Let's see what the whole ensemble looks like now. Instead of it just being held notes, maybe I can make it a syncopated line. I'm going to add, I'm just going to repeat the same note, doing something like this and then do the same thing in the next bar. And then in the final bar. But this is why I wanted to show it this way, because of course a viola can also pizzicato. Again, using the expression tool, I'll click on the bar. And then under technique text, there is pizzicato listed, and I can assign that to the instrument. And let's take a listen now. I'm also going to bring this pizzicato line up an octave so that it's more present in the texture overall. I'll move the pizzicato word over here. And of course, viola can read treble clef. So I will change the clef. Perhaps in this situation it's a little bit too close to the harp sound, but you get my idea. Now once we have the score done, what we need to do now is analyze it. This is why I keep these original bars, this original staff right below the main score. I'm going to now move the staff that we were using to write down the harmonies, and I'm going to move it down. If we use the staff tool on the main tool palette, Now what I want to do is analyze the piece. I'm again going to use the expression tool. I'm going to click on the first bar where there is material, and I can write below the staff. I'm going to double click on the lowest staff, and then under miscellaneous expressions, I'm going to create a miscellaneous expression. In this case, maybe I'll try a large font size, maybe like 18, and now I have to write in what the chord type is. In this case, it was an F major 7th chord. And then I assign it. And that way if there's ever again in the piece an F major 7th chord, oh, just like here, all I have to do is click it and move it into position. In this bar, I'm going to duplicate that. Now edit it so I have the same font size. 
And by the way, you don't have to worry about superscript or different sizes of numbers and the letters for the fonts. We just want to get the general idea of what the harmony is. So in this case, the second bar is an A, half diminished, seven chord. The little zero with the slash through it can be uh, gained by using option O on Macintosh, and then we'll assign it to this bar. Finally, we want to get rid of that original staff that we were using as our draft. So I'll go back to the staff tool, click it, and the whole thing lights up, and under staff at the top of the page, I'm going to say delete and reposition. Although, of course, you can circle some non-harmonic tones in the piece, I'm not requiring it. And again, you could use the expression tool, double-click the note. In miscellaneous, I would create a miscellaneous expression, a shape. And we're going to create just some kind of a circle, doesn't matter really what. And then when we assign it to that part, we can double-click it and get it into a more reasonable situation like this and then maybe label it as a passing tone or whatever it happens to be. If you want to export your file as an audio file to listen to it later, at the top of the screen under file you would export as an audio file and it will tell you what it is and what you want to title the piece as etc. Maybe we can title it non-functional tonality piece number one. <laughs>